I don't want to do my art to empower me. I want it to empower other people, to bring people together, things about humanity, about human beings, not about Ruben. You know, if I can disappear in the process, I think that I've accomplished something. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I met Jim Houghton uh, at the O'Neill, and we bonded and, uh, and kind of vowed that we worked together somehow in some capacity. Uh, when I started working uh, with him in August Wilson season, uh, we felt that there was a lot more work left for us to do. We, you know, he, Jim was open to a lot of ideas I had, a lot of things that I was interested in, a lot of things that I thought were important in the American theater canon that might have been overlooked as writers and as work. And he uh, perked up to that idea. And so uh, I came back and, and uh, proposed the NEC season, the Negro Ensemble Company season. And then, you know, working in the, the, the Negro Ensemble Company, which was Negro Ensemble Company, was my first real theater home here. And so to have an opportunity to put their work out, their work that hadn't been seen in 20, 30 years, uh, to, to see this work out there again, and not only just out there, but be appreciated and accepted and celebrated and enjoyed by a whole new generation of audience, people that have heard or maybe not even heard of uh, Home or The First Breeze of Summer, uh, Zoom in and the sign to see that work and see how pivotal it was in the growth and canon of American theater. This work was changing theater when it was done, and it continues to do so because the issues are still relevant. Mm -hmm. But to, to have Apple in the process with me, to pick his brain, to find out what is important to him, not about the play. Mm -hmm. What's important to you, Apple? What do you want to say in your in your in these in this twilight of your life? Mm -hmm. At 80 years old, just about, is there anything that you wanted to say that you didn't get a chance to say? Or did you say it all in your plays? Mm -hmm. And do I just have to unearth these gems mm -hmm. and push them out there and, 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 and melodiously kind of sing these songs? This play gives me an opportunity to not only bring life as it is on stage, but to bring something bigger than life. It is theater. Mm -hmm. And I will make sure when you come in to see this play that you have a theater, theater experience, mm -hmm. that we're not just going to sit you down and school room and just say, look what happened that day. Mm -hmm. When you revisit something, you can revisit it as a museum piece, mm -hmm. or you can revisit it as, how do we feed this to you now? Mm -hmm. And so I'm feeding it to you now. Mm -hmm. The period when, I, when Metro Massacre took place in the 1980s and all that was going on in South Africa, did you feel, like, were you aware of that you know, at the time, or did you feel affected by it? Like, you know? Very much. Very much, you know. I was doing scissors when I, I'm, I'm a, I, I like to study as an actor. I like, I like dramaturgy, I like history. I like to find out, mm -hmm. and so I was doing a lot of research. Things that, that you, that were accessible to me, and things that were not accessible that I had to dig out, mm -hmm. illegal. Film, interviews from people that had been there and saw things that they were very reluctant to, to share with me or anybody else because of the fear of what the impact of giving that knowledge up would be on them, mm -hmm. legally, illegally in their country, where they'd be expert. People were sharing things with me that they normally, it took me weeks to get one guy to open up to me, one South African grad student in my school. Mm -hmm. But when he finally befriended me and opened up to me, a lot of tears were shed. A lot of realities were, were revealed, uh, heinous, heinous realities. Mm -hmm. You know, things that empowered me as an actor because it gave me a reality base that, though not firsthand realized, realized through the spirit and soul of the person who was sharing it with me, telling me this is important. This is not just an actor trying to look pretty on stage. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to be ugly as hell. It's okay to cry and have snot come out your nose. It's okay to be vulnerable and weak and scared. And it's okay to be angry as hell and want to kill. And because and, and, you have reason, and these are your reasons. And when I had that, then I could ground my work into that. And so when I came out, people were afraid of my realities because I had felt like I was living. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't trying to let me play at this. I'm not the kind of director that will let any actor play at anything. You got to be in it. Mm -hmm. In, in, in. All in. Invest it. And the more you invest, the more you get back. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a very presentational director. I'm all about the relationships, the realities. And then the rest of it, then let me, I'll paint, I'll do the art on the outside to help tell the story. But on the inside, the connection is clear. Mm -hmm. Clear. What's important? What's at stake?